Now, I got everything welded underneath that I wanted to, and I'll explain a little bit about that in a second here. So obviously, we flipped it upside down, got it upright, and we're, we're, our next step is going to be welding our framework on for our sides. Now back to the welding. Um, I kept an eye on it when I was welding all this stuff underneath, when it was flipped upside down, and I noticed that it was starting to, it was starting to bow a little bit. Um, actually, it was going this way because it was the other way around. Um, so I didn't want to put any more heat. I ended up only welding the outsides of all these. I just put one bead. Now, I, I, I'll back up a little bit. I stick welded it instead of wire feeding, which I don't know why. I just did because I have plenty of rods and I thought I'd use them up. So it probably got a little hotter than I wanted to, which is good because now it gives me a chance to explain how to remedy the situation. Um, I'm going to go back and weld this stuff, but first I'm going to put our framework on, get everything tacked up, and what that's going to do is it's going to act like a bridge. It'll stiffen everything up so you don't get so much of this. Um, so when I, when I start putting heat to all these, uh, it weakens the metal and then it cools down, it contracts, and eventually this thing could look like a banana if you don't take care of it. So I noticed that was going to happen, so I slowed down and decided I'll just weld it enough to flip it over and we'll put the, the, the side racks on and it'll act like a good bridge. That'll solve that problem. So um, I'm, I'm kind of glad it happened because, uh, you know, I'd hate for you to, to be welding everything up and have it look like a banana when you're done. So um, if, if I would have used a wire feed, um, it maybe wouldn't have put quite as much heat. You know, a stick welder burns a little hotter. I was using 7018s. So, and I had her cranked up pretty good. Um, the hitch and everything came out fine, nothing moved there. I got all that welded up. But uh, I just, so anyway, we're ready now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tack our sides on. I've got fenders to put on and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so I've tacked up this first side. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to say a little something. I didn't take a whole lot of time and fumble around with a square. I mean, you can do that, but what I did was I, I, I put a speed square on, just like this, put it on there, drew a line, put my piece of angle iron right up to the line. It, it came out really good. It, it came out perfect. Just follow your lines. And what I did was I stayed back just a hair right here so I could get a good weld there. And then, now I stayed back, like say, for instance, it doesn't matter what you do, but I stayed back three-eighths of an inch. So I had my top rail stick past three-eighths of an inch because what I'm going to want here is uh, my, my, the one coming across is just going to meet up with this, and you, you'll see when we get that far. Um, I put them on wherever there was a cross member. So basically these are 16 inch center also. Uh, not necessary, I mean you don't have to do that. Uh, you can do whatever you want really because it just depends on how, like if you're gonna strap things down by having your, having your ratchet straps on, you know, hooking on here, you might wanna put a few more on. But I wanna, you gotta make sure and leave room for your fenders. Um, so I, I just wanted to tack everything up and I'll grab a fender. These are fenders that I just bought at a local store. I mean, price tag's still on there, $31.99. Um, like I say in my plans, you just can't build fenders that look worth a darn compared to what you can buy them for. But how these are gonna go, and I might do this last, but um, basically I'm just going to center them up this way, center them up this way. It's going to sit in here. I'm going to weld here. I'm going to weld here, here. Um, they already have a back on them, which for me wasn't really necessary because I might put side steel on, but I don't know. Uh, it actually works out perfect if you were going to leave it in an open trailer. It's nice to have the back on the fender. 
then you don't get any road spray, you know, I'm in the snowy area. So I won't get all that stuff in the in the trailer or on anything that I'm hauling. So it'll be nice. Um, basically, I just wanted to, to give you an idea here. Um, if you're going to build your own fenders, uh, now would be the time. You might want to piece them together to make sure that these aren't in your way before you weld everything up. And one more thing. Back here, I know it's a little hard, but we'll, it's hard to see, but we'll get a better view when I start doing the uh, ramp. Um, I left this two inches longer. So like this bottom frame rail piece is 96 inches, eight foot. This is 98. And I left the two inches stick out the back. And basically what that's gonna be is room for a pin to, to latch our ramp so that the ramp stays up. Uh, a real quick issue that came up, um, this stuff happens, on paper everything works perfect, but when you get out and start doing stuff, not everything works perfect. I think when I welded um, underneath, the angle iron might have rolled a little bit. Either way, um, I had a little bit, It was both of these sides were spread out a little bit, so what I did, and this is a real simple fix, I just grabbed a ratchet strap, pulled it together, got the measurement that I want, and now my front piece is gonna fit exactly perfect. Now, it wouldn't matter if it's out a little bit, but if you had already cut this, <laughs> it would be nice to get it to fit, you know, if you cut it beforehand. Um, so, I just wanted to mention, I, I try and get these tips as they come up, you know, things happen, it happens to everybody, so. It's a real simple fix if you have a ratchet strap or anything, come along, whatever. You can just pull it together. Once I get it tacked in, everything's gonna be nice and square. Okay, we've got all our, we got our front on, everything, all this railing is tacked in place. Um, I just wanted to show an example of, you saw earlier when I was jiggling this thing around and now, I mean, you can see, how stiff it is just by adding this stuff. I mean, and I'll, I'll point out too, it just like on the plans, this is two by two by eighth. This is two by two by eighth. You know, to keep the weight down, keep the cost down. I don't feel that this needs to be that heavy duty, but you can see how stiff eighth inch actually makes this. Um, I think it's great. I mean, now if you start welding, it, I'd still skip around. Believe me, you can still get this thing to look like a banana if you just start pouring heat in, in one spot and then, you know, move on to the next. So I, I, I'd weld that one and then go over here and then there and then here. And, you know, by the time you get back over here, that's cooled down. And, you know, I'd still skip around. So um, I just want to give you an example. I mean, look at this here. Watch the trailer. You know, before this was on, you know, that was, that was flexing a little bit. So um, even if you just wanted a flat bed, if that's what you wanted, I mean, truthfully, that's all I really need, but this bridging really helps. I mean, this, this is like gives your trailer strength. So um, it's looking heavier duty as we, as we go. So it's just an idea. And, and you know, once we get the fenders in, they don't look like much, it's gonna help. You know, everything helps. So my next step, I'm um, thinking I might mount the fenders. Um, and, then, and then we can mess with the, with the ramp um, tailgate in a little bit.